damn it. You know we're shooting all kinds of different cars. And we <laughs> do all kinds of di different stuff. Yeah, on the end of the day, it's funny how, how a simple little Corsa from 2005 gets us out of the trouble of every other car. <laughs> when you think about it, when did we have issues with the Corsa? Never. No, I don't remember any. He always fires up, he always does the job. <laughs> every time a car runs out of battery, Corsa is there to help. say is happy new year to everyone and I apologize for not posting any videos in the last four weeks me and Marek were busy with holidays and other stuff as well but we are back on track now and we're gonna start all the new year with a new repair video which is gonna be regarding the engine of the Chrysler 300C which is a OM642 this engine is shared in between Chrysler, Jeep, Mercedes and you can find it into C-Class, E-Class uh, as I said already, Chrysler 300C, the Jeep, uh, Cherokees, Grand Cherokees, the CRD ones. If you want to find out if this issue is related to you and your car and how to fix it, all you can do is go to Auto Data, find the model of your car, and just look below. For example, I'll show you. So once we go onto Auto Data, which is a free app that you can download, this is not a sponsored video. If you go further down, you see engine model code, which is OM642. So the issue that we have today is with the swirl valve motor. The swirl flaps are stuck open and the car goes into a limp mode. Let's plug our one into the diagnostic. But bear in mind there is few fault codes that are related to the same issue. So the good thing is you don't have to drive your car to any dealership or whatsoever because a small diagnostic tool like this one which is ridiculously cheap again this is not a sponsored video this is something that I brought while my laptop was broken but we're gonna use it for today just so I can show you that you don't need a professional diagnostic to find out what's your problems these ones you can find for anything between 6 and 20 pounds which are pretty much enough for most cars just to show you basic information like the one that we're gonna need to find out today and if you've got the check engine line and you're guessing that this is your issue it's worth buying one of these instead of paying 40 quid to get your car checked into a garage right let's hop in inside let me show you the fault codes we can leave the car running it doesn't have to be on ignition if you're gonna be plugging a different car like Mercedes or Jeep the diagnostic port is on a different place on the Chrysler it's located just here underneath so all we do is we plug it, then this thing lights up, it connects to the mobile phone. This pretty much works with anything I use, car scanner. Again, none of that that I'm gonna show in this video is sponsored. So we need to turn the Wi-Fi on for this one. Right, it's connected. There we go, diagnostics read, simple as it is. So as you can see, the fault codes that we have is P2010, P067 and P0046. Right, so the car goes into a limp mode mainly because of the P2010, which is the intake manifold runner control. Right, so the fault codes for the swirl valve motor can relate from anything from P2010 to P20, I think 15 if I'm not wrong, but then double check it anyway. If it's intake manifold runner control, it's highly likely that it's the same issue as my one. And it's highly likely that the way we're gonna fix it is gonna work for you as well. So we're going to start with removing the top cover. So for this job, you're gonna need basic tools you don't need anything special I don't want to keep going up and back into the garage that's why I took out my set so we're gonna start with removing this plug here first so all you want to do is a flathead screwdriver push it out and then you just and then you just lift it then we want to remove the turbo pipe by unscrewing that bracket Right. 
we're going to put on side to be fair we'll remove it just for convenience from this side as well so you've got another bolt just on here for them brackets you can use also 8 mil socket whichever is, works better for you right then what you want to do is remove that gasket here we use a small flathead screwdriver and get something like a towel gasket noisy, no oil whatsoever or you can just replace them with brand new ones this is not related to the issue that we're having but oil keeps dripping on the bottom which is not really really good for the engine so now I'm gonna take a smaller flat head and the plug for a swirl valve motor is just located here and all you have to do again flat head screwdriver lift that up and remove it and pull it up again give it a good clean so here on the bottom is your swirl valve motors plug in order for you to take this plug off you can also remove them three bolts so one here one here and one here these are 10 mil which you can remove for more convenience uh, in my case i don't think i need to remove it uh, it's not necessary as you, as you can see it come off easy for the repair we're gonna use this resistor which is a 4.7k ohms 5 watt you can use anything between 2 and 5 watt we're gonna plug it onto the plug that goes to the ECU, which is basically going to tell the ECU that the solar valve motor is operating. So your check engine light hopefully is never gonna come back and your car is not gonna go into limp mode. Also, I need to mention very, very quickly, if you type in Google emulator for solar valve motor on the Chrysler 300C or in general on the OM642 engines, you can find a fancy plugs, which are basically a resistor in a shape of the plug on the swirl that's the same like the swirl valve motor it's a lot more fancier it's a little bit more expensive it's like a tenner you can find some for 36 quid as well or you can just buy one of them resistors this one is one pound 60 you can get even cheaper ones which are about 50 pence or a pound for 10 of them i'm just using this one because it's going to be a lot more easier for me to insulate it in the plug um, and let me show you how it's so all you have to do twist it around and you want to put put it in between okay. pin one and pin two. There we go. And then we're going to use a insulation tape. Make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. You want to make sure that you're going to insulate the bastard very well so it doesn't come off. Well, I think that's going to do the job for me. And you want to find a good new living space for it, which I'm probably going to pop it just over here underneath the pump there we go fit your gasket and we're going to fit them back in so we're gonna install the turbo pipe back in make sure that it's nice and steady Fit that back in, put the plugs, insert the cover back in, make sure it's nice and tidy. Use gloves, definitely use gloves. What we want to do is go back inside and clear the engine fold codes. 
we want to read the codes again. I want to clear them. Right, let's go and test. <laughs> As you can see, even though we don't, we have the issue with the turbocharger solenoid, we don't have a check engine light anymore, which is a good thing. And let's see if the car is going to be in limp mode. So far, so good. Go on to the straight, give it more gas, see how it is. It definitely feels a lot more responsive. Check engine light is not back on, but then again, my one it usually comes off in about five or ten minutes of driving then first of all you can feel that it's going to limp mode then uh, then a check engine light is to follow so we're gonna stop recording now and we're gonna go out for a half an hour drive to see if the car is gonna go back into limp mode but in general this is how you fix your sort of valve motor issues literally by installing a 4.7k resistor 5 watt 2 watt onto the plug which again, short cap tells the ECU that our swerve, swerve valve motor is working as it should. Super cheap repair and it doesn't cost you anything. So if you get the diagnostic tool, call it eight pounds. And if you get a resistor, another pound. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, you've wasted yourself nine pounds. Simple as that which is not a lot at all comparing to if you go to a garage so a main dealer is going to charge you around two thousand pounds to fix that issue for you a normal garage is going to charge you about five to six hundred quid if you do it yourself you need to pay about between 100 and 150 pounds for a new sort of valve motor if you get the emulator it works but you're gonna pay around 30 pounds so I will definitely try it on first with the resistor. This is the cheapest way you can go for, and if it works, then you've saved yourself lots of money. Um, with all that being said, I'm going to turn off the camera now, and we're going to come back in about half an hour, which for you is gonna be less than a second. So we've just came back from a half an hour drive in the Chrysler. Luckily, the check engine light did not go off, the car did not go into limp mode, which means we've sorted out our issue. A quick recap of this video. In the beginning of it, we had symptoms of a failing swirl valve motor, which led the car to go into limp mode. My one was not permanent, it was doing it every now and then, but I've plugged it into diagnostic, found out the issue. Then we did sort it out with a little resistor, which is one pound, as I've mentioned it already. The actual job is super simple. As you can tell from the video, if you've watched the full video, you literally need basic tools like a screwdriver. As I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, this issue is related to the OM642 engine. So to remove the cover and to get to the swirl valve motor on for example Mercedes or a Jeep it's gonna be slightly different to the Chrysler itself you wouldn't need more than a basic socket set and a flathead screwdriver then the whole process it takes about 30 minutes otherwise if you don't mess about it's five to ten minute job and the last thing that I want to mention is as I've already said it in the video, I just want to recap it. The fault codes related to the swirl valve motor are anything from P2010 to P2015, maybe some above as well. Just plug it into diagnostic. If it says that it's the intake manifold runner, it's highly likely that it's the swirl valve motor. So it's worth to try this method first because it's the most inexpensive one. And the best thing about it is if it's not working, then all you have to do is just take out the sensor 
and put the plug back in. That's it. I hope you liked the video and I hope that we've managed to help you in some sort of a way. If you did enjoy watching it and if it was simple enough for you to understand what we're trying to say and what we're trying to do, please hit the like button, put a comment below, share and subscribe because that's how you help us grow. <laughs> I'll be watching a guy who does like a top 10 of different stuff and he's like always, hey good people, <laughs> put, a button, put a comment below. <laughs> 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 but in the same time, it looks super good. Yeah. <laughs>